PC Miscellaneous, bringing you the best unboxing, reviews, and other related videos. Welcome back guys to another tutorial. I'm going to be going over the SteelSeries engine today. My name is Michael and um, yeah, let's get started. So the basic settings of the mouse are going to be the sensor settings. So you have exact sensitivity, exact lift, exact excel, exact aim, and free move. So basically your exact sensitivity is going to be your DPI or what SteelSeries calls CPI, counts per inch. Basically this is all up to you. Um, it's all personal preference. I myself am a low sensitivity gamer so my two toggles are going to be 450 and 500 so 450 as my primary and 500 as my CPI 2 which is the one I can toggle. Exact lift is basically like the lift off distance. Exact lift determines how high you have to raise the mouse before it stops tracking. Setting a lift distance too high may accidentally move the cursor when you try to reposition your mouse while setting it too low may accidentally lose the tracking of your mouse while moving. Try to find a right balance that is comfortable for your hand and is compatible with the surface you are working on. Like it says, it basically depends on um, what kind of a mouse pad you have. Like if you have a cloth pad, if you have a plastic pad, if you have a aluminum pad or a Teflon, whatever um, material you have. Base it off what kind of a pad you have. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can find out on Google what lift off distances work best with your mouse pad so uh, personally i like a very low lift off distance as soon as i pick up my mouse even the slightest bit i want it to stop tracking prevents jitter for when i'm swiping my mouse across by the way default is 40 percent if people were wondering steel series exact acceleration basically um is just acceleration with just some fancy words in it um if you like acceleration feel free to turn it on if not I would say leave it at it at uh, zero. So just a reminder, guys. Um, even if Exact Excel is off, meaning on zero, there is still three to five percent of acceleration. So you guys will have to reference back to my mouse fix that I have on my channel just to completely eliminate the acceleration. The definition of mouse acceleration is basically um, the quicker you move your mouse across the screen like this. Um, It'll automatically raise your DPI for you, so um, it just basically accelerates faster. Um, yeah, basically it causes inaccurate tracking. Sometimes it can cause jitter, unprecise movement. Yeah, you don't really want it, in my opinion. If you're an FPS gamer, I highly suggest that you just turn this off and, like I said, do the mouse fix. SteelSeries Exact Aim is basically the opposite of SteelSeries Exact Excel. So basically, exact aim is deacceleration. So basically, when you move your mouse really slow across the screen, or let's say you're playing uh, Call of Duty, and you're trying to uh, steady your mouse and get that precise headshot or whatever. So basically, exact aim will lower your CPI, so you can uh, fine tune your movement. I mean, I guess this thing can come in handy, but sometimes. Um, like I said, it, it will cause inaccurate tracking and you might get that really slow movement when you just want the normal uh, CPI speed. So, for best results for FPS games, um, it's been pretty consistent with all the professional gamers. They all say no acceleration and no deacceleration. So, I just left that at zero. Now, Steel Series Free Move. Free move decides the amount of path correction or angle snapping on your mouse. Path correction is a default on most mice to compensate for less than ideal surfaces and prevent jittery movement. However, the trade-off is that the prediction is not always accurate for incredibly fine movements. A high free move setting will allow for very straight lines, while lower settings will allow more precise control over the cursor. So, um, free move basically means um, if you're swiping your mouse and it's kind of like uh, a wave it'll just straighten out into straight lines so let's say if you're trying to uh, scope in at someone and then uh, scope up and a little bit towards the right corner instead of that it'll just go straight across um, like a straight line so um, yeah I would turn off prediction completely it's just not good at all for video games um, but some people do like it again so I mean I can't really tell you what settings to put so, like I said, just keep off uh, the prediction. 
Moving on to the aesthetics of the mouse, you have the LCD. So you can adjust the brightness and the contrast. Um, I cranked all of this up 200% because I want to see what's on the bottom of the screen. And just another reminder guys, you can load custom bitmap images. So basically um, you can load custom game logos, your username, your clan name, um, a catchphrase. I mean basically whatever you want, you can load it up on uh, onto the LCD that's located on the bottom of the mouse. So that's something you can do. I mean you can't really see it while you're gaming but I mean it's just a thing that you can brag about to your friends saying hey I got a screen under my damn mouse. Um, so moving on to the LEDs. So you have the scroll wheel LED, the Steel Series logo LED, CPI toggle 1 LED and CPI toggle 2 LED. So you have these preset colors here so basically the whole rainbow right here and if that is not enough for you you can freaking uh, just look at this yeah just go crazy with this rainbow thingy yeah tons of colors um, and if you want you can find something online about hex colors if you want this specific color um, yeah you can type in hex code polling rate. So the polling rate determines how frequently the computer samples the mouse for information. Increasing it will make the cursor even more accurate to direct mouse movements but will require more resources both in power and memory for the computer. Sometimes 1000 Hz will not work very good if you have a low-end computer or something that's really slow or if you don't have enough memory. Um, I've also heard that sometimes overclocking can cause um, jitter when you're using a thousand hertz. Um, also I heard it causes jitter when you're using a low DPI or CPI setting so myself I wouldn't use a thousand hertz because one I am overclocked and two I am a low DPI or CPI user. I think 500 hertz is perfect for me. I've tried a thousand hertz a little bit of jitter here and there so I took it down to 500 and uh, the jitter went away everything's all good. It's all about just uh, playing around fine-tuning your settings to what you like um, I mean, I can get you guys some preferred settings, but that, that'll get you started. I mean, you can always just adjust it to what fits you best. So this right here is basically just like a recording system. It'll basically record the most used buttons on the mouse. So I guess this can be ideal for setting macros or um, seeing what buttons you use the most and stuff like that. So maybe those MOBA or um, RTS players can really get a good use of this but as an FPS gamer I don't use macros um, basically uh, mouse 1 and 2 for me and just maybe a little bit of scroll wheel so that's pretty much it I don't really use this too much so yeah another thing is properties so you can set up different custom profiles for different games and what's really cool is you can add different games so add an application, you can like browse for different games and stuff. So when the game or the uh, the .exe file pops up, SteelSeries Engine will automatically load your custom profile for that game. So you don't have to go around um, going back into SteelSeries Engine or going on board the mouse itself and changing your custom profiles. You can just have SteelSeries Engine just automatically load it up when your application starts. So that's one thing that's really, really cool about uh, the the profile action activation okay moving right along to the onboard profiles so um, profile one is always going to be reserved for steel series engine so the last selected profile that was in steel series engine is what's going to load up on profile one now profile two three four and five are all up to you you can set up different profiles uh, for different games and all you have to do to access them is hold down the CPI button for about three seconds and then use the scroll wheel to select um, what profile you like and then um, it'll ask you if you want to change any, any settings then you'll scroll all the way to the bottom and hit set as current it's really really simple guys um, it's not rocket science so um, here on the newer driver software you have some custom default profiles not really custom but um, I guess these are the defaults for 
professional gamers from Counter Strike. So you got Karn, you got uh, Natus, and a bunch of people I don't know. So StarCraft 2 players, blah 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 blah. So let's take a look at what these guys are using. Okay, so let's look at the StarCraft 2. Okay, so it looks like he's got 1600 and 3200 lift off distance of 40%. Like I said, guys, all the exact stuff is turned off. Um, 1000 hertz, because he is a high DPI player, 1600 is pretty high. Um, wheel LED, I, I doubt that he has this color because this is just a default Sensei color. So, yeah, guys, you can just change that if you like. Um, this is the default too for the LCD. So let's see what this guy is using. 1350. Yep, very low lift off. 500 hertz. Seems about right. Idra. Let's see what he's using. 1600. 40% lift off. 1000 hertz. Let's see what Karn is using. eleven seventy very low lift off distance seven percent five hundred hertz or megahertz I'm sorry okay Natus four hundred DPI or CPI excuse me forty percent lift off five hundred hertz and last but not least another guy from Fnatic a League of Legends player one thousand hertz all the exact aim and free move and excel off um, 29% lift off distance, 1600 CPI 1, 3200 CPI 2. So basically guys, it's uh, it's pretty consistent with the polling rates and the sensitivity. So basically what I see is um, players with high DPI or high CPI will play with 1000 Hz. Players with low sensitivity, like me, play with 500. And these players use a very low lift off distance. Um, there's only like one or two players who use the like 29 or 40 percent um, but then again guys it does depend on the mouse pad so it basically comes down to tweaking the lift off distance to get that uh, that right track um, and then again something that was really consistent with everyone was um, acceleration turned off um, deacceleration de turned off and free move turned off yep and that's pretty much it for the default profiles alrighty now I just loaded back my custom profile so if you would like to make a new profile it's pretty straightforward you will hit new profile and if you would like to rename it all you have to do is double click it backspace and then type in whatever you want so test and then you just go into the settings and then rearrange what you want guys Alright, so that pretty much wraps up for this tutorial. Hopefully this was helpful and um, hopefully you guys learned something from this. I know this is kind of repetitive from all my other SteelSeries Sensei videos, but um, I just thought it would be better to compile everything into one video just so you guys don't have to go through several different videos getting the uh, information necessary for SteelSeries Engine. So, um, yeah. So this is for um, Woodpecker to be exact. Um, he requested this video so this is to you my friend and hopefully I helped you out um, yeah so stay tuned guys for future videos um, if you found this video helpful please thumbs up and subscribe for the upcoming videos so I got more unboxing reviews coming um, soldier front tutorials and just a lot of other stuff coming so just be sure to be subscribed alright thanks guys and I'll see you guys then